everyone, welcome to another Far East Wargaming Battle Report. And once again on the channel, we have Paul. Welcome, Pleasure. Paul. Always good to be here. Yep, glad for you to be here. Likewise. Uh, we're bringing you something different for today. Uh, this time we're bringing you 4,000 points. And for the first time on the channel, I think you're going to see a Primarch on Primarch battle. Very exciting. I'm bringing the Alpha Legion Loyalist, or are they or are they not, with Alpharius and... You never know. Uh, I have got the Emperor's Children, including the Sire. Fulgrim himself. Yes, yes. Should be very interesting. This is our first time to play Primark on Primark in a game this big, so it's going to be very different for us. Mm -hmm. We might make some mistakes, so we're going to apologize in advance if you say of any of that. Uh, we are also playing something different as well. We're playing one of the Goonhammer missions, and this is a, a mission called Supply Drop. So essentially there's five objectives, and the objectives are not placed until after everybody deploys, and then if you capture an objective, it disappears. All kinds of shenanigans. Which Should make for an interesting game, yeah. At least yeah. something a bit more non-standard. Yeah, it seems pretty, uh, pretty apropos for the Alpha Legion shenanigans. Very much so, very much so. Uh, it also uses secondaries such as the Price of Failure, Slay the Warlord, and there's also a very unique one, which is attrition-type scoring, where basically, depending on how much you lose in terms of your points that are killed, could also score you some different points. So I recommend very much if you try the Goonhammer missions. It's a fun little spin. So, yeah, looking forward to this one. We'll come back in just a moment with the Army Showcase. Here we have 4,000 points of Traitor Emperor's Children. This force is led by the Primarch of the Legion, Fulgrim, and he will be wielding Fireblade. Accompanying him is a five-man Tartarus command squad. They are all wielding Thunderhammers. For HQs, we have a Tartarus Praetor wielding a Combi Bolter and a Thunder Hammer. Accompanying him is a four-man Tartarus Command Squad. Two, including the Standard Bearer, are wielding Lightning Claws, and two are wielding Chain Fists. As dedicated transport, they are riding in a Land Raider Proteus Carrier with Searchlight Upgrades. For the second HQ, we have a Tartarus Chaplain with a Thunderhammer. For the third HQ, we have a Centurion Chaplain in Artificer Armor with a Warhawk Jump Pack, Melter Bombs, and a Power Axe as his Crozius Arcanum. For elites, we start with a two-man Apothecarian detachment. One Apothecary is wearing a Warhawk jump pack and upgraded to a Power Sword. The other has no upgrades. The second elite's choice is a Castra Ferrum Dreadnought, upgraded with a Gravis Plasma Cannon and wielding a Gravis Power Fist with inbuilt Heavy Flamer. The third Elite's Choice is a Contemptor Dreadnought with a Gravis Melter Cannon and a Gravis Power Fist with inbuilt Graviton Gun. For troops, we start with a 15-man Assault Squad. The Sergeant has been upgraded with Artificer Armor, Melter Bombs and a Phoenix Power Spear. Two of the Legionnaires have been upgraded with Power Swords, and one has been upgraded with a Power Axe. The second troop slot is a 10-man Tactical Squad. The Sergeant for this squad has been upgraded with Artificer Armor and a Phoenix Power Spear. For dedicated transport, they'll be riding in a Rhino with Dozer Blade upgrades. The third troop slot is another 10-man tactical squad. The sergeant has once again been upgraded with Artificer Armor, and this squad will also be riding in a Rhino dedicated transport with Dozer Blade upgrades. For fast attack, we have a two-strong Javelin Landspeeder squadron. The Landspeeders have been upgraded with Pinto-mounted Multimelters and are using Cyclone Missile Launcher Sponsons. The second fast attack is a three strong Sky Hunter Squadron. They are all upgraded with multi melters. The Sergeant has been upgraded with Artificer Armor, and one of the Sky Hunters has been upgraded with a Nuncio Vox. 
The third fast attack is a Xiphon Interceptor upgraded with the Ramjet Diffraction Grid. For heavy support, we start with a 10-man Cacophony Squad. The Orchestrator has been upgraded with Artificer Armor. The second heavy support is a 7-man Sunkiller Squad, all wielding LAS Cannons. The Noviator has been upgraded with Artificer Armor and a Augury Scanner. Rounding off this force, we have a Land Raider Spartan with two LAS Cannon Arrays, a Flare Shield, Hull Mounted LAS Cannons, and Searchlights. This will be acting as the transport for Fulgrim and his Command Squad. This rounds up 4,000 points of Traitor Emperor's Children being led by their sire, Fulgrim. Here we have 4,000 points of Loyalist Alpha Legion running the Headhunter Leviathan Rite of War. For their rewards of treachery, they have chosen the Tyrant Siege Terminators from the Iron Warriors Legion. Leading this force is their Primarch Alpharius. He is accompanied by a 5-man Cataphracti Command Squad. Two, including the standard bearer, have been upgraded with power axes. Three are wielding thunder hammers. All of the chosen are wielding Volkite chargers. For HQs, we start with the Exodus Alpha Legion Sniper. The second HQ slot is a Centurion Chaplain in Cataphractite Terminator armor wielding a Volkite Charger and a Thunderhammer. For the third HQ, we have another Centurion Chaplain, this time in Artificer Armor, with a Power Dagger and a Combi Melter Gun. For Elites, we start with a three-man Apothecarian Detachment. All of the Apothecaries are wearing Power Armor and using bolt pistol and chainswords. The second elite slot is a two strong Contemptor Dreadnought Talon. Both Contemptor Dreadnoughts are using Kerry's Assault Cannons and Gravis Power Fists. One has an inbuilt Graviton Gun and the other has an inbuilt Melter Gun. For troops, we start with two identical 10-man tactical squads. The sergeant for both squads has been upgraded with Artificer Armor, a Combi Plasma Gun, Power Dagger and Power Fist. One of the Legionnaires in each unit has also been upgraded with a Legion Vexilla. The third troop slot is a 10-man tactical inductee squad. The Sergeant has been upgraded with a Power Fist and one of the Legionnaires has also been upgraded with a Legion Vexilla. Next, we have a 5-man Tactical Support Squad. The entire squad has been upgraded with Melter Guns and the Sergeant has been upgraded with Artificer Armor and a Power Dagger. The 5th Troop Slot is a 5-man Reconnaissance Squad. The entire squad has upgraded to Nemesis Bolters, and one of the Legionnaires has upgraded to an Augury Scanner. The sixth and final troop slot is taken up by a 10-man Hunter Kill Team. The squad has been upgraded with Combi Plasma Guns, one has been upgraded with a Multi Melter, and the Headhunter Prime has been upgraded with Artificer Armor. For fast attack, we have another Headhunter kill team. This time, they have all been upgraded with Combi Melter Guns, with one Headhunter upgraded with a Multi Melter, and once again, the Sergeant has been upgraded with Artificer Armor and a Power Fist. The second fast attack is a two-strong Javelin Landspeeder Squadron. 
Both have been upgraded with Pinto mounted multi melters and two hunter killer missiles. For sponsons, they are using cyclone missile launchers. The third fast attack is a three strong sky hunter squadron. The entire squadron has been upgraded with plasma cannons and the sergeant has been upgraded with artificer armor and a power dagger. For heavy support, we have a 10 man heavy support squad. The entire support squad is using LAS cannons. The sergeant has been upgraded with artificer armor and one of the legionnaires has been upgraded with a legion vexilla. Another has been upgraded with an augury scanner. The final unit for this force is the Rewards of Treachery unit, the Tyrant Siege Terminator Squad. They are five strong and they are wielding combi bolters and power fists. This wraps up 4,000 points of Loyalist Alpha Legion running the Headhunter Leviathan Rite of War being led by their sire, the Primarch Alpharius. And the battlefield for today's supply drop mission is a snow terrain with industrial and rocky outcrops. This should provide ample places for the supply drops to land and get recovered. All right, here we have 4,000 points of Empress Children deployed. Uh, all the way on the far left, we have a Land Raider. Inside that Land Raider is a Praetor, Tartarus Armor, and a Command Squad. Um, they have two Thunder Hammers as well as um, Lightning Claws. Behind that is a Rhino Attack Squad. Up front, we have a Castaferum Dreadnought with a Plasma Cannon and a Heavy Flamer. Um, just right next to that, we have two javelins with multi melters and missiles. Behind that, everyone's favorite, the Sun Killer, seven men, including Sergeant with Augury Scanner, etc. Um, fully equipped out. And then toward the center, we have three multi melter jet bikes. Um, they also have a non seal box. There's Artificer Armor on the Sergeant. And then right next to it is the um, Death Star. We have Fulgrim with another Tartarus Command Squad, six members strong, and there's also a Tartarus Chaplain uh, attached to that unit. And then right next to it is a Contemptor multi melter Grav Gun. Um, just next to that is a 10 man squad of Cacophony. They have pretty stock just artifice arm on the sergeant and there's also an apothecary with that squad. And then all the way on the right hand side of the flank hiding behind the building is another 10 man tech squad in a rhino. That's all that's deployed right now. And in reserve is a 15 man assault squad with another chaplain as well as another apothecary. Those are deep striking. And there's also a Xiphon interceptor. For the Alpha Legion, uh, Paul won the roll off to see who gets to go first, and that did mess up my little trickery of Alpha Aries being able to reposition units in the deployment. Uh, but that's okay. What wasn't okay is the way the table is set up had limitations for a lot of my infiltrate, but it is what it is. So starting on the right flank, I did manage to squeeze the uh, tactical support squad with melted guns infiltrating here on this right side, basically forcing Paul to think about stuff. Uh, thanks to Alpharius' unique abilities and Warlord trade, etc., he's infiltrated with his command squad here, uh, basically positioned them where the Sun Killers couldn't really get a shot on them, and neither could the Cast of Ferrum. Coming over into the middle, more towards that, is the infiltrating Headhunter squad, 10 man strong with the Combi Melta and an Apothecary. They're in a position where they can jump out, and if Paul gets too aggressive, then they can come out and do a little bit of damage. In my back right corner, we have a tactical squad. So this tactical squad is basically positioned themselves where not much can actually shoot them thanks to night fight, because night fighting is actually in effect. Here also on my right flank, I have the inducti, I have the las cannon squad, and I have the javelins all in this area right here. The inducti can't be shot at turn one, so I could position them pretty well in the open. 
uh, ready to hopefully go grab on some objectives. And then the last cannons wanted to take advantage of that five up cover save on the building. Coming more towards the middle in my left, hidden behind the rocks here, but a little bit difficult to see is actually the siege tyrants. I wanted to position them in a way that they couldn't get shot at turn one. Uh, they have the chaplain and cataphracti armor with them in the uh, rare case that they get into combat. Next to them, we have another tactical squad. We also have the recons who have positioned themselves in a way that they can get shots on the sun killers, but not be shot at much by themselves. Uh, Exodus is up on the rock, ready to shoot at somebody. The uh, plasma cannon sky hunter squadron is back here, also far enough to make sure that I would be out of range of the cacophony turn one. And then finally, the last thing on my left flank, I've got the infiltrating headhunters with combi plasma. Uh, we may try and pull some trickery here. We'll see what happens. They've played very aggressive. And then the contemptors taking advantage of Alpharius's abilities have infiltrated themselves behind these, this little silo. Uh, basically a big distraction carnifex and also positioned once again where not much can shoot at them. So Paul does have turn one. I would love to be able to actually get a seize, but we'll come back with that roll in just a moment. So now for the all-important fist bump. Good luck, Paul. Good luck. I would love to be able to get a seize. I'm going to try and roll that Alpha Legion symbol. Let's see what happens. Uh! No, it's a three. First turn to the Emperor's children. All right, here we go. All right, so start of my turn, five objectives were deep struck, let's say, and three were, I was able to choose the location to where on Jason's side. These are the two here on Jason's side. Both of them he tried to put a little bit more close to the tech squad toward the center of his field, but they scattered to the side. And then on my side, um, there are two objectives over on this flank. One is just here next to the land raider. Um, another one more toward the middle, uh, just ahead of the javelins. And then the last objectives all the way at the back here uh, ended up scattering on top of that building. All right, Empress, Children, Movement Phase, Turn 1. Uh, shuffled everything around a little bit. The Land Raider with the Command Squad inside uh, moved to the side here where the objective is. The Land Raider is parked just on top of the objective. And next to that, the Command Squad decided to get out. Target obviously to wipe off that pesky squad just there in the corner. Yep, I elected not to react to that. I could have probably moved myself a little bit further back and make the charge a little bit more difficult, but I wanted to save my reaction for something else. And by the way, for Alpharius, I have to declare at the beginning of his turn what uh, phase I'm going to use my extra reaction, and I chose shooting this turn. Yep, so more toward the middle, the um, Castaferum Dreadnought moved up a little bit just within range of his last cannon squad now, so hopefully we can peel off a few there. That would be a nice pickup for turn one. Um, the Javelins just moved around a little bit to get line of sight on his Warlord slash Alpharius squad. And behind that, given that I will want to be scoring pretty soon, my attack squad got out so that they can secure that objective at the start of turn two. Um, Sun Killer stood still. They don't really have that many targets at this point, but can probably plink off a few Marines of a back squad. And then over on this flank here, there was a little bit of movement back and forth. I've positioned the Spartan as well as the jet bikes plus the Contemptor such that they can hopefully get off some shots on the back Contemptors um, that Jason positioned behind that um, building. Yep, and, and when the, that stuff came up in towards the middle, the bikes, the I actually reacted first to the Contemptor. The mm -hmm. Spartan moved first, didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. The Contemptor moved up. I elected to react by advancing towards it. Uh, and then after that, you move some other stuff. That's right. And then he moved forward slightly so that his um, headhunter squad was within 12 of my cacophony. So I elected to just move them back a little bit in case he was going to return fire there so that I would be able to uh, survive a return fire without getting rapid fired. And then last thing, my tech squad got out just so that they can score that objective at the start of the next turn. That's it. Right. Emperor's Children, turn one shooting. I'll say overall a mixed bag. Um, the Terminators that got out of the vehicle um, popped off the sergeant of that squad. 
Um, I was able to do that because he had at that point spent both his reactions, so no chance of me getting Melta blasted in the face. The Land Raider itself took two wounds off Alpharius, so that's not too bad, and then the Heavy Bolter took off one member of the attack squad behind there in the corner. The remaining members of the attack squads were wiped by the Sun Killers, so that was another three casualties there, but that's what uh, held, so unfortunately did not run off the board. The um, Castafarum Dread, who had moved up in order to Plasma Blast, the last cannons unfortunately totally missed and got um, shot in return. Yep. He lost two wounds to that, so I guess it's okay. Um, that was bound to happen, just losing two wounds is, I guess, acceptable. The Javelins also tried to do something to Alpharius Squad, however, that was all saved. The Tax Squad there just positioned to score the objective, and then... On the other side of the board, there is a little bit more carnage, some uh, mutually assured destruction here where the cacophony um, went for the, was it Hat Hunters? And both units are left with only two um, members alive. So quite bloody. Yep, I elected to return fire. I did have a couple guys in rapid fire range and yeah, it was a uh, mutual destruction. Yep, and then everything else there, so the three multi melter jet bikes, the Spartan as well as the Contemptor, went for his front Contemptor. Unfortunately, not the most successful shooting. There are a lot of good saves, so I only managed to take off three wounds from that front Contemptor. All right, we only have one assault this turn, which is my Terminator Command Squad wanting to finish off that squad. Obviously, there's first going to be a Melter Overwatch, so that probably will take off a few of my squad. Well, we'll see. It's night fight, so I need fours That's to hit, right. but I would really love to get some uh, good rolling here. So hitting on fours, and hey, there's three. That's, pretty decent. That's exactly what we need. Mm-hmm. And on three ones, please. One on twos. Uh, that's cocked. That's two so far. That's three invulns. Five three up, invulns. sir. All right, here we go. That's three dead. That's pretty decent shooting, I would say. I'll take that. Um, all right, let's see how far do we go. Six inches. That should do me just enough. Yep, I'm sure you don't want to take uh, your, your guys. These just... guys. Well, actually, we need to check that again. You might want to put that other guy back front because remember, I'm two inches further away because of Alpha Legion and you're going through difficult terrain. I think I should actually be able to go without the terrain. Yeah, just check it real quick. Mm. Like this? Yeah. Um, yeah. We're no, not, no millimeter off the board? We're not going to quibble over that. That looks good enough. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. All right. I do pile in and strike first because uh, I don't think you have a grenade harness, correct? I'm not going through the terrain now, right? Oh, you're not. So actually, no. Uh, yeah. But you got unwieldy on anything or no? I do have on the front guy. Uh, the back guy will fight first. Okay. Go ahead. All right. So that is three attacks hitting you on threes. Yep. That's two hits. And that is a lightning claw, so four ups with shred. That's nothing. Shred. That's still nothing. Wow, I might get lucky here. Uh, mm -hmm. I do have four attacks. Well, I say lucky, but you still have a thunder hammer. Mm -hmm. Here's the four attacks out of the regular melter guys that would have piled in. Uh, we're hitting on five, so that's a right. command squad, so that's only one hit. Mm -hmm. And then a four to wound. Yeah, you do owe me a save. One, two up. And we're good. You're good. All right, now. All right, now the big boss. Hammer time. Five attacks, hitting on threes. All right, no. Yeah, this is where I die. Yes, that's the squad. Okay, Four. squad wipe. And that's the wipe. And then you've got to consolidate. That's I'm right. assuming you're probably going to go back towards the objective. That's right, I should just be in. Movement for the Alpha Legion. Uh, we played a fairly aggressive. Uh, so on this right-hand flank, the uh, Tactical squad in the back moved up to be in a position to score this objective. Alpharius and his command squad just shuffled a little bit because I didn't want to bring them out too much. There's just still too many las cannons, multi multos, and everything else on this side of the table. The javelins moved up. The headhunters moved up. Um, unfortunately, neither one of these are going to be within melter range of the land raider, but I do have lots of options on who I can shoot over here. The inducti unit moved up the middle, uh, basically to open up bolter shots, hopefully on that other attack squad. Moving over to the left flank, the other tax squad here moved up, uh, putting themselves in range to shoot out the jet bikes. 
The siege tyrants, because of the way that the difficult terrain worked, they decided to just come around over on this side and with the omniscope on the sergeant, I don't have to worry about night fighting. Uh, the jet bikes here position themselves to be able to draw a line of sight to the jet bikes. Uh, but I also position myself in a way where I'm still in night fight range, but I cannot actually be shot back because of the Alpha Legion sneakiness. And then finally here in the middle, the two contemptors split up, one going after the Rhino of the attack squad, the wounded one coming more towards the jet bikes or the opposing contemptor. And then the headhunters here moved up and you smartly moved your Spartan back to take you out of melter range of that multi-melter, correct? That's right. All right, well, it comes down to some shooting right now and we'll be back in just a moment. Turn one shooting for the Alpha Legion, and I forgot to say that at the beginning of the phase we activated Alpharis' special ability and I gave the entire army preferred enemy everything. I needed it because I needed a punch back. Uh, so starting on this right hand flank, we had the Laz Cannons that started the party. They went ahead and shot at the Land Raider. Uh, we managed, thanks to the good rolling and the preferred enemy, we managed to actually do five total damage on it. Three glance, two pen, and unfortunately, Paul, your shrouds weren't too good there. Sad. So the Land Raider was dead, but didn't blow up, which was actually helpful. Um, next up was the Javelins, who could spot the remaining two members of the Praetor and his command squad. Uh, they didn't fire their hunter-killer missiles, but the multi-meltas and the regular crack missiles did the job, wiping out that squad and protecting that objective. Next up was the headhunters here with combi meltas. Uh, only one guy could not see. They elected to fire at the javelins. They popped off eight of the combi meltas and the multi melta. We took one completely out and one is left on one wound. It would have been nice to kill both of them, uh, but I can't get too greedy. Next up was the Inducti squad in the middle. They came up. They fired at the opponent's tactical squad. Uh, we did manage to kill two of the Emperor's Children attack marines, but it's not enough to cause a check, and therefore that squad is still in a position to score. Uh, up against the Sun Killers, we had a combination of Exodus, who went first and sniped the sergeant. Uh, the unit uh, was not pinned, but next up the Recon squad went ahead and fired at him, uh, managing to kill two more, and that squad is now pinned but they did not break. And then the last few things shooting on my left-hand flank, the Siege Tyrants, they went ahead and fired their crack missiles at the remaining members of the Cacophony squad, wiping it out. The Tactical Marines, the Plasma Bikes, uh, and the remaining members of the Headhunters, they all went ahead and shot at the bikes. We managed to kill one bike and wound the Sergeant, but they went ahead and stayed alive. They didn't flee. And then lastly, the two contemptors, the contemptor here in the middle that's wounded fired at the opposing contemptor. And even though he got a wound with the melted gun, uh, the invuln was passed. And then the contemptor over here on the flank decided to shoot at the rhino. Um, we couldn't charge because we infiltrated this turn, um, but we didn't destroy it either. So I can't complain. Uh, Alpharius's force multiplication was actually pretty de deadly this phase. Turn two, Emperor's Children start. I managed to score two objective. Would have been nice to have three, but alas, not meant to be. And so the replacement of those two objective, this one, I placed pretty much exactly where the previous one it was. It scattered just back slightly, so I don't mind that at all. And then on the other side, um, Jason tried to put that objective just in front of his tech marines there, but that objective didn't want to go there, so it's off by 11 inches just behind that building there. Womp, 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 womp. Okay, and now um, first let's roll if there's still night fighting since it's turn two. That is... That is still night fighting. Still dark, okay, we'll take it. And then let's see for reserves. So I have two reserves. Um, one is a deep striking assault squad on a three up. Yep. And then I have a Xiphon on a three up. That's also in. All right, so we'll place those and show you guys the results in a second. The assault squad took a bit of a gamble there. Deep striking back there was easy to go off the table, but they actually got a hit and so managed to position themselves quite nicely in the back line there. Um, 
and I also managed to pin the last cannon, so that was pretty huge. You did. I elected to intercept the my normal movement phase reaction with the javelins. I thought I would have done more damage, but you had some good rolls, and I only killed two assault marines. That's right. So pretty pretty decent on this side. Quite happy with that. And then further back, as you guys can see, the um, Xiphon also is on this side of the board. Had to be on this side because even though I managed to pin the last cannons, um, his what are they? Siege, Siege tyrants also yep. would have been able to get a free intercept there. And with those flak missiles, I think this thing would probably be dead. So glad that I managed to avoid that. Um, the Castaferum also moved up slightly just so that there is no chance I would be failing that charge against his squad up there. Um, the Javelin just moved around a little bit. I thought might as well get up some free shots on uh, Alpharius' squad since I have no real other decent targets there. Um, further toward the back, the my tax squad just repositioned slightly, hiding behind the Rhino, um, so that his tax squad has a bit more difficulty to shoot them in the next turn. Sun Killer's obviously pinned, so they can't really do much. And then on the other side here, all the way on the right side of the flank, um, Fulgrim actually decided to descend from his vehicle um, up into glorious combat to take out those three dudes there. Uh, everything else moved up slightly. The Contemptor moved up slightly to face his Contemptor. The jet bikes moved just around so they could potentially shoot whether that's the Siege Tyrants or the Tech Marines, anything over on that side. And then the Tech Squad that I had all the way in back corner just re-embarked onto the Rhino and shuffled around a little bit to get further away from that Contemptor. So on this side here, the Javelin obviously took pot shots at the Alpharia squad. I think did nothing. Um, moving back slightly, the Castaferum, the um, plasma cannons scattered off onto the Javelins, took one wound of the Javelins, the Heavy Flamer did nothing. And then the second thing to shoot Alpharia squad was the Xiphon. I managed to take off one member of the command squad, so I'll take that small victory there. Um, yeah. And a wound. And a wound on Alpharius, yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was also a wound on Alpharius. So yep. then th that's all the shooting on this side of the table. The Sun Killers tried to pot shot off a few tag Marines, but there were no hits given that they were snap firing. Um, all right, and on the other side, mixed back, I would say, overall. So the five last cannon shots from the Spartan managed to only kill one jet bike, and those jet bikes passed their leadership check, so they're still there. Um, my jet bikes try to take off uh, some of his jet bikes as well, given that at that point he had no more shooting face reactions, but failed to hit miserably thanks to the darkness out. Um, in the Contemptor v Contemptor battle, he obviously elected to return fire, and I managed to take off two wounds, I think, and he, you took off one wound. Yep, yep, I'm down to my last wound, yep, and so you only lost one. I think that should be able to finish him off in combat, and that's it for shooting face. All right, so over here, Fulgrim Squad, obviously, those guys, not, not much to roll there. Now let's do the more interesting one, Contemptor against Contemptor. So thanks to Empress Children, obviously, I do get to fight first. I just need one successful wound through, so let's hope this does the job. So four attacks here, hitting on fours, it's two hits. And that's only one wound, so... Uh oh, but it's Brutal 3. Yeah. I need well, you only have one wound. I so. only have one wound left, but... So it's uh, just a five up. If I can pass all three of these, he's still alive. Yep. No, okay. he's dead. So uh, see how far he blows up? Yep. Two inches. I think so. that's just going to be your Contemptor. So let's see yes. what happens. Yes, your Contemptor's wounded. All right, two up. Nope, All right. We're good. Okay, so this Contemptor is dead. Mm -hmm. All right. Good. Consolidate. All right. Okay, <clears throat> and I think you've got a, we've got a big mess on the other side that we're actually going to do off camera because there's just too much stuff over here. And mm -hmm. we'll come back with the results. All right, so this combat didn't quite go as planned. He actually got to fight first, given that the Castle Firm only is Initiative 2 and the Power Daggers were sufficient to take out that Dreadnought. Um, the combat behind went a little bit more successful. Um, this was a disordered charge, obviously, with one half of the squad going after the last cans, the other one half, half going after the Tech Marines. 
Um, Tech Marines lost three guys, and the last cannons, I think they lost seven, and the remainder of the squad then ran. Yep. Uh, the Tech Marines held, however, given that they are also within range of uh, Alpharia's stubborn bubble, so we're going to be stuck in combat there. Yep. Uh, so yeah, last cannons fled off, and we'll do the. We still have to do the pile-ins and the consolidates and everything else. And on the other side of the table, as expected, Fulgrim obviously ate up that unit, and my contemptor managed to take out his contemptor. However, taking a wound in return while doing so. Turn two for the Alpha Legion. We scored the objective that was here next to Alpharius because this one was contested, and then after we scored it. We tried placing it over here by the TAC Marines, and what do you know, it finally actually deviated where we needed it to, so it's right there, but we'll see if the TAC Marines are still there in just a minute. Uh, as far as movement goes, starting on my right-hand side, uh, Alpharius and his unit, now that they no longer have to babysit an objective, are coming over to help and get rid of this assault squad. The headhunters, uh, they went ahead and moved up aggressively. Um, they want to be able to try and shoot at either TAC Marines or at the Sun Killers. The Javelins came over here to the middle as well to give themselves choices on some different things to shoot. The Inducti ran up as well. Uh, they'll get some shots off hopefully on something, either Sun Killers or maybe something else. On my left hand flank, there wasn't much that moved over here with the exception of the Siege Tyrants. They went ahead and came around the corner to give more options for shooting. And then finally, the remaining two jet bikes with Plasma Cannons came over here to the left hand side, as did the Contemptor which actually triggered a reaction out of the opposing Contemptor who wisely decided to run away. Uh, also, I activated through Alpharius's special rules. This was the turn that I activated Sudden Strike because I can see myself getting into uh, a couple different combats here. And then we'll move on to shooting. Shooting for the Alpha Legion and it all went downhill and that could actually be the game. So on the left flank, the plasma bikes, one of them got hot, the sergeant, and the other one managed to hit Fulgrim's unit. Yet no breaches, but we still only got one wound through. We threw everything else, the Contemptor, uh, Exodus' 24 inch shots, the snipers, uh, the siege tyrants to try and kill that Contemptor and we only killed two wounds off of it, it's still alive. To add insult to injury, the TAC squad rapid fired everything they could into the bikes and also did no damage. So everything on this left flank was completely ineffective and that could be really, really bad because there's a lot of charges potentially coming up from the Emperor's children. Uh, in the middle, it didn't go much better. So the uh, inducti shot at the sun killers. We did kill two of them, but they didn't break. Two javelins against a rhino, you would think that we would be able to do something there. No, it's still alive with one whole point left. My headhunter squad also went ahead and shot at the Sun Killers. We only killed one and we lost three of our guys in return thanks to the return fire reaction. And then finally on the left side, the uh, command squad with Alpharius elected not to shoot at actually anything because we didn't want to get a return fire from the Javelin and we want to position ourselves for a potential multi-charge. So the only successful charge for the Alpha Legion, my Contemptor failed to charge the other Contemptor, so we came over here. Alpharius' unit successfully declared a multi-charge. Uh, we did say also that we were using his ability at the beginning of this turn to have sudden strikes, so that means everything is going to get a plus one to their initiative. Uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and do um, a challenge. So Alpharius is going to issue a challenge. What would you like to do? And we are playing the SNN rules where wounds carry over. Sure, I'll accept the challenge with with my um, sergeant. With your sergeant. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well, we'll switch those guys out. Yep. So Alpharius will strike first at initiative seven. Mm -hmm. Now I have six attacks only because it was disordered, so no charge bonus there. So weapon skill, I'm basically hitting you on threes. All right, that's four hits. Mm-hmm. And this is with his spear, it's strength six, AP mm -hmm. one, murder sure. strike, instant death, blah, 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 blah. So, yep, that's going to be the sergeant and two more dead. I do get involuntary pain, right? Uh, well, let me check the, let's see, the spear does have instant death, but I didn't roll any sixes. So, yes, you do have three feel no pains. And my shield. And your shield, yes. Six ups, one, and then five ups. Everything's saved. Oh, oh, yeah. Take it's, that, Alpharius. It's going to be one of those turns. <laughs> okay, uh, now it's your turn to strike. So you're going to pile in. Yes. 
Okay, uh, so who do you want to, you've got... I'll try to finish off the attack marines, obviously. Okay, yeah, you've got a lot against the attack marines. So I think right. you've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. Seven, and then plus the apothecary with chain swords that can go into the attack marines. So that's 14, 17 attacks? Yep. Okay. And then this is technically the first round of a new combat because I charged in. Well, I, so I, hatred t triggers again? Triggers your hatred again. Mm -hmm. Sure, I'll take that. So 17 attacks. Yep. Hitting on fours. Oh, thanks for the hatred here. That's direly needed. All right. And fours. Yep. With a reroll for the chain Shred. chain swords. That is four, eight, 11. 11. All right. Okay, so this is 11 saves of three up. And then I do have a six up feel no pain because of the objective. I'll roll it over here just because there's more space. Uh, we're doing okay so Not far. I only failed all. one. Not Feel no pain. All. Yes! Wow. All the saves. See. Look at that. Beautiful. Not only Empress children can do it. Okay. Uh, you do also <laughs> have a two two power swords. Um, sure. I think both of them have a... Well, one of them has to go against the tax squad. The other one has a choice. We'll take both against the tax. Okay. So on fours. Yep. It's, uh, and then on fours, that is one guy dead. Okay. Oh, one six up. One six up, feeling a pain. We fail. So that is one attack marine slain. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you have a javelin that gets sure. to go before my thunder hammers. Two attacks, three attacks maybe? I think it's two, and I think you do have bolt pistol and chainsword with so javelin, three? if I'm not yeah, mistaken. I'll take it. Uh, hitting on fives, I guess. Yes, because of command squad. Um, nothing. Okay. Oh, chainsword, yeah. One. One. All right. So on the command squad save. That's a four. We're good. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then my hammers are actually going to go, and axes are going to go before your guys because of the sudden strike. Mm -hmm. So going into your assault squad, I've got one power axe, mm -hmm. and I've got, I'm going to do two thunder hammers, so sure. that'll be those two. So let's start with the axes. Yep. Hitting on threes. That's one hit. The wound. Two. Nope, that doesn't wound. Mm -hmm. And then the four thunder hammer attacks, mm -hmm. again on threes. Only two hits. Yep. And twos. Uh, two invulns, sir. Four invulns. Guy number one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's brutal. Uh, yeah, dead. Guy number two. Uh, oh, sorry. I get the female pain here. Oh, no, no. No, no strength gate. Yeah, yeah. So then just two guys die. All right. So two, yeah. I'm assuming regular yeah, chain just, swords? Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, now my one thunder hammer into your javelin. All right. See if we can take that last wound off, but it's not been a good combat. So. Okay, and that's two hits. That. Yep. And yep. Yeah, yep, two brutal twos. And no save still. So. Okay. So the javelin is down. Mm -hmm. And now you have your axes. So mm -hmm. see There's one axe. There should be um, the sergeant has an axe. Yep. And then there should be one axe in the squad and the chaplain. Okay. So do the axe in the squad against the tech marines? Yep. My, is my sergeant still alive? Yeah, he's still alive. He was the one that accepted the challenge. And, and you have, axe, yes. and you have right. another axe. So that's five attacks. Uh, you, well, your sergeant has to go against Alpharius, but oh, okay. your, your other axe can go against the tax right. squad so if that's what you want to do. Yep, against the tax. Yep. Uh, yep. Two six ups. Uh oh, that could be enough to kill them if I don't pass <clears> the six ups. <throat> and yes, the tax squad is dead. Whew. So they're down. And then you've got the sergeant's attacks yep. into Alpharius, needing fives, but look at this. Yeah, T4, right? Uh, T6. Majority. No, oh, it, it's, it's, a challenge. Challenge. it's a challenge. Yeah, it's a challenge. Right. That's, right. that's uh, one. One, okay. Four one of them. He got the four. Okay. So that's good. And lastly, the chaplain into the terminators. Okay. So fours. And threes. Yep. That's two invulns. Okay, two invulns here. Nobody in the Terminator command squad is wounded, but yet we still lose one. Uh, it's going to be one of those combats. Watch me. Yeah, we'll go ahead and lose the axe. Okay. Well, we're going to see an 11 now for the leadership check. And... Well, so you, yeah, right? <laughs> okay, so I lost one, two, three TAC Marines. Well, you're stubborn, right? Stubborn 10. Yeah, but we just got to total this up real quick. Mm. So three TAC Marines, command squad lost two wounds, so that's yep. five total. Yeah. And then you only lost, excuse me, two assault marines and one wound on the javelin. Yes. So I lost. 
And don't forget, I got another plus one for Fulgrim. You do, but thankfully, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we have. Uh, yeah, we didn't. We didn't fail. <laughs> oh, that was a but that could have been a lot worse. That could have. That, that, that would have been. Um, that could have been too much to ask. Actually, I think Primarchs are, are fearless, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Oh, okay. So yes, it wouldn't so have mattered, but uh, yeah, it's pretty pathetic. For the regardless. Look at this. This is what happens. It's been that kind of game. So uh, it'll be turn three, Emperor's Children. So I managed to score one objective, and I tried to place it just back where, to where it was. It scattered off quite a bit, but my squad still managed to run straight towards it to make it within scoring range for the subsequent turn. And then else over here, I shuffled around a little bit, the Spartan just aligned to hopefully finally take out those two jet bikes. Um, Fulgrim Squad went straight toward the Contemptor, who decided to run away slightly. Yep. And then moreover, on the other side, I just moved up the jet bikes as well as the Contemptor, such that they could be contesting the objective. The Xiphon just came around a bit to get better line of sight on whatever is on the side of the table. Yeah, and, and for my Alpharia special ability, I said I'm going to take my extra reaction in the shooting phase. And also one quick disclaimer, I used Sudden Strike last assault phase, but I can't do it on a disordered. So thankfully, Alpharius and his unit did so poorly that it didn't actually matter. Yeah. Um, but yes, so yeah, that would, wouldn't have triggered on a disordered charge, but I just wanted to say that as well. Relatively um, short shooting phase here, the Spartan just managed to wipe out those last two jet bikes. I think that was pretty much to be expected. Yep, I didn't want to waste a reaction. I knew that uh, they couldn't survive five twin link blast cannon shots, so... Yep, and then next up, uh, the Xiphon shot at the... What is it? The Recon Marines um, just managed to kill one. Yep, I elected to shroud with that unit, and I had declared at the beginning of this phase, thanks to Alpharius shenanigans, I was going to do two shooting phase reactions, and I only lost one Recon Marine, so they didn't break. Yes, so the smart play by Jason here this turn was, I decided to, my last Sun Killer would want to try and take a wound off his Contemptor, and that triggered his special reaction by which the Contemptor managed to move back 12 inches, and now is out of charge range, out of Fulgrim and his Terminator Command Squad. Yeah, I uh, had already withdrew in the movement phase when Fulgrim and his squad moved, and then I was able to use the advanced reaction to get even further away, more Alpha Legion shenanigans, and mm -hmm. save him for at least one more turn. Um, pretty quick combat phase over here. The Contemptor tried to charge in but was killed from the Overwatch. However, his explosion in turn took down five attack marines who did pass the leadership check. So I guess somewhat mixed results over there. Yeah, it was a six inch explosion. So thankfully I didn't lose a tyrant or wound my contemptor and your bikes also survived. So you did more damage blowing up than the actual charge. And now we have the combat over here. Can Alpharius actually redeem himself? He's, we'll see about that. Yeah, he's still stuck in a challenge. So I'm gonna go first against mm -hmm. your sergeant. Yep, that's right. Uh, no sudden strike. So this is going to be hitting on threes. Mm -hmm. And that's a much better roll. That's everything, actually. All right. And then this is going to be wounding on twos with instant death on sixes. So uh, once again, no instant death. So you do have four, four invulns slash feel no pains because it's only strength seven. So six ups. There's one. And five ups. So yes, you take down the sergeant and two other guys. Yeah, because again, we're playing the SNN rules where the wounds do carry over. So I'm going to kill your sergeant and then two guys obviously with chain swords. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you're going to be striking with your regular guys before my thunder hammers. So yep. chain swords, including the apothecary, you've got one, two, three, four, five regular guys with chain swords plus the apothecary. So that's 13 attacks. 13 attacks. Yep. yep. Hitting on fives. Yep. You've been rolling pretty decent with these guys. Yep, at least something. And four is with shred. shred. Yep. That is three wounds. Okay, I'm gonna take these on normal terminators. Mm -hmm. And we're good. All right. Okay, and then you've got uh, you got what sword power swords? You got two. Two power swords. That's yep. right. You got fives and wounding of fours. That's nothing. Okay, and then uh, why don't you go ahead and do your? Sure. Uh, yeah, I think you've got one regular axe guy left. Yes. Yep. That's two attacks, no hits. All right, and now your chaplain. Yep. Four, five, fourth, uh, master crafted. Yep. And threes, that's two invuls. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take these on 
Uh, um, I don't think there's a lot that can hurt Alfarius. So I'm going to start the first one Alfarius on a 4-up invuln. We're good. Mm -hmm. And the second uh, one I'm going to take actually on a regular Terminator. Uh, it takes a wound. So thankfully I did that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then now it's my two Thunder Hammer guys. Yep. Three plus the standard bear. Okay, so hitting on threes. Not too good. And wounding on twos. Uh, you owe me three brutal twos on your six up in bone. Sure. Got a one, dead. Number two, dead. Number three, also dead. All right, so we did much better there. Again, no feel, no pain, because of strength eight. Mm -hmm. All right. I killed one, two, three, four, five, six, and you did one, so you're losing by five. But I'm also stubborn. But you're also stubborn. Chaplain. Yep, chaplain. We're good. Yep, we're going to be there for another round. Mm -hmm. At least I contest the objective. I'll yes. take it as a moral victory. Absolutely. Turn three for the Alpha Legion, and with movement, I uh, used Alpharius' special ability in the beginning of this turn is when I decided to use the Fleet 2, because I knew one of, at least one of my units was going to run. Which first, I moved the headhunters this direction to the TAC Marines to try and get into as much rapid fire as possible, and you wisely reacted away from that. Then the TAC squad here, the inducti, actually took advantage of the Fleet 2, and they ran as far as they possibly can, hopefully to try and position themselves to get on that objective in later turns. The javelins, which were here, made the move over here because they wanted to be able to open up shots on either the Spartan or the tactical squad. If I can kill that scoring, that would actually be really, really helpful for me. On the left-hand flank, I don't actually have a lot, and the only thing that actually really moved was the Contemptor moved further back because I don't want to get charged by Fulgrim and his unit, and I don't want to charge into that unit because I don't think I can win due to Fulgrim's mountain of attacks, higher weapon skill, higher initiative. The TAC Marines just shuffled back a little bit here, basically because they want to stay within that objective, uh, but we want to make it as hard as possible for Fulgrim and his unit to try and charge us in the next turn. I need to get some good shooting here. If I don't, I think it's going to be an uphill battle. We had a shooting phase that we actually needed, so the Javelins elected to go ahead and shoot at the Spartan. Spartan decided to try his luck. I snuck through a multi melta shot that penetrated and rolled a five and it exploded. It managed to take out one of the command squad Tartarus uh, and it didn't do any other damage. So that was actually really, really good. The headhunters and Exodus. Exodus started first at the tack squad, sniping the sergeant, which helped. They weren't pinned. And then the headhunters in the middle went ahead and fired at him with their combi bolters. We killed two more and we forced the unit to break, which is huge because that unit doesn't have a Vexilla. So that takes uh, that tax squad off of the objective, which is very, very helpful. In the middle, we also had a decent round of shooting. So the tax squad went ahead and fired at the jet bikes, um, doing a wound. The snipers went ahead and shot at the jet bikes. They also did a wound, uh, actually did two, and we went ahead and got rid of the rest of those jet bikes. And then the Siege Tyrants fired at the Xiphon, and you would think with Skyfire that we'd be able to take that thing down, but it's been one of those kinds of games. We did two hull points to it, so it still sits on one. We did stun it, which actually makes it shaken. And I do have one more thing to shoot, which I actually forgot about. Uh, let me roll, roll that off camera, and then we'll come back in just a moment. So resolving this last Contemptor, who I thought was in my dead pile, but actually he was still on the table. He fired his carries into the command squad with Fulgrim. Uh, he did manage to sneak one wound through, and even with the free shroud for Fulgrim, uh, I did actually win one of the Tartars. Back in just a moment, and we'll have Assault. Can Alpharius actually get his act together? Remains to be seen if he can polish off the rest of these pesky Assault Marines. So can Alpharius, or whoever thinks he's Alpharius, if it really is Alpharius, <laughs> get his act together? I'm actually starting to believe that this isn't Alpharius, it's just somebody using the name. All right, so his six attacks into the squad. So hitting on threes. And again, it's a futile roll out of the man. Wow. And twos to wound. Mm -hmm. uh, two wounds at significant AP. So you get your invuln, but you do also get your feel no pain because you only strike seven. Uh, let's start tanking this on the chaplain. Five up and feel no pain. Oh, okay, he takes a wound. Okay. Put that over there, and then one guy, one wound on a normal guy. Yep. Feel no pain. I'll re roll that. Yep. Okay, so one chain sword down. Yep. All right, now it's once again your turn to strike back. Mm hmm. 
So piling in chain swords, including the apothecary, you've only got now one guy plus the apothecary. That's going to be uh, what five total attacks? Yep. Okay. Five. That's two hits. Yep. Four. Two wounds. All right. I'm going to take this uh, one at a time on Alpharius. He's good. He's good. And the mm -hmm. reason why I'm doing that is I have a wounded Terminator there. Mm-hmm. Okay. So power weapon. Power weapons. You got two. All right. Four attacks. On fives. That's one hit. That's nothing. Okay. And then you've got, uh, you still have one axe left besides mm -hmm. the chaplain. Yep. Let's do the axe and the squad on fives. That's one hit. One wound. Okay. I'll take it on all areas. No, he takes another wound. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's and go. then the chaplain. Yep. Four attacks on fours. Master crafted. All right. Nice. Uh-oh. I'll take that. And threes, that is three wounds. Okay, I'm gonna take these on the regular squad. I can't afford for Alpharius to take any more <laughs> wounds. Four ups, and we lose the wounded. I'll take that. Yep. Okay, and then now I've got four attacks from my Thunder Hammers coming back. Six, right? That guy still gets a fight. Yeah, that's right, because it's the same initiative. Thank you for that. No worries. Threes. We really need to do some damage here. That's a good roll, that's what we needed. Mm -hmm. And then this is on twos. All right, you've got three brutal twos. All right, number one, dead. Number two, dead. And number three, dead as well. Okay, so I'm assuming that you want to lose chain sword, and you've got your choice of apothecary or power swords. What do you want to do? Kill, kill a power sword. Okay, you got one more. You want to use the last power sword or somebody else? Um, we'll take the last power sword. Okay, all right. So it's now your check. I did win that one. Mm-hmm. I'm still stubborn 10, and we're good. Yep, all right. Staying for another turn. Another turn of combat. No scoring in this turn for the Emperor's Children, sadly. Uh, Fulgrim and his squad ran forward just to surround that objective and make some space so that um, hopefully in the next turn he cannot deny me to score that. The Javelins reacted away from that just to get to their safe distance there. Your tax squad, I think, fled off the table as yes, well. Yes, yes. Thanks for the reminder. Yes, indeed, the running tax squad decided this was not for them, so they ran off the table um, valiantly fighting another day. The last Sun Killer decided to um, leg it and hide behind that rock so that he may secure me some points at the end of the game. That's all for movement. So we move straight into the assault phase because based on what the Emperor's children actually did in the movement, they didn't have anything they can shoot. And for the eagle-eared and eagle-eyed amongst you, you'll realize that I've been playing Alpharius so badly because he could have been allocating a lot of his strikes to get rid of things like axes or the chaplain or the apothecary. But hey, you live and you learn. I've only played with a uh, Primarch twice in 2.0. No excuse, but we wanted to get that out of the way for those of you that are still watching. So hopefully again, he can redeem himself this time. He's got six attacks. Hitting on threes, and the futility continues, missing with three of these. All right, uh, we're gonna just go ahead and allocate all of this into, we're gonna start with the first one into the apothecary, which does not wound. Second one into the apothecary, which wounds. Now he does get a feel no pain because it's strength seven. We're good. And the last one in the apothecary, it does wound. We're good. And he's good. And once ah, again, Alpharius is not doing very well whatsoever. And you're going to strike before my Thunder Hammer mm -hmm. with your Apothecary. Uh, sure, that's three attacks. One hit. Tread. One wound. All right. Take it on the regular squad. We're good. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you've got a Power Axe. I'll let you get that out of the way before I do my ham hammers. <coughs> yep, that's the Squad Axe. That's one hit. Yep. That's a wound. All right. And I'll save the wound pool. So now you're chaplain. Mm-hmm. Four attacks, hitting on fours, because you're still majority. Ugh, that's not that great. One master crafted, that's nothing. So one, <laughs> so all right. So one invuln for the ax, which we fail. So that is a wound again mm -hmm. into the squad. Come on, hammers. This is where I need you to actually do something. Mm -hmm. So four attacks, hitting on threes. Only two hits. Gosh, the squad has been terrible. I, it's definitely not the real <laughs> Alpharius. <laughs> You owe me two brutal twos, sir. Yep, and I will... I guess the chaplain is not on the objective, right? So I'll probably have to start taking out on him. Okay, so... Uh, because I do want to continue to deny that objective there. No so, feel, no pain, so he's just going to go down. No, I'll take it on the chaplain. The oh, chaplain. the chaplain, okay. So, uh, five ups. Nope. He's dead. And then... 
I you're, guess we'll take it on the last squat member there. But then you won't, your apothecary, remember, disappears. So, oh, that's right. So, yeah. just so take, then just the apothecary dies. Just the apothecary dies. Yep. Okay, so now you have a break check here. So you're no longer stubborn or what, whatnot. That's right, I am no longer stubborn or whatever. So two wounds. We're good. You're ice cold ice and you're still cold. contesting that objective. <laughs> that's actually huge. That's why you lost the apothecary. For exactly that reason, because mm -hmm. that lone assault marine continues to be a thorn in my side. Mm -hmm. Turn for the Alpha Legion, and it all comes down to sneakiness and trying to make sure that I can maximize the objectives. So the inducti went ahead and ran, which allowed them to get over to where that objective was on top of the or under the broken land raider, as it were. The headhunters that were in the middle decided that discretion was the better part of valor and backed away from Fulgrim and his squad because this mission does have points for how much you still have left alive or you have lost. So I don't want to give away those free points because Fulgrim and his command squad will just br brutally murder them. The javelins had no choice but to kind of position this way. We do want to try and see if we can perhaps kill some of that squad, just get lucky or maybe even just shoot the rhino at this point, who knows. The Siege Tyrants moved around to draw a line of sight. They can see a couple members of the command squad, including Fulgrim. The tax squad in front of them, the objective that we scored at the beginning of the turn, uh, we placed it again in the same area. It's scattered a little bit. We've moved up to be within the three inches of the objective. And then on my left side, the Contemptor moved up to get within range of his carries of Fulgrim squad. And one member of the recon squad had to reposition in order to be able to draw a line of sight. So that was it for the moves. A little bit of shooting. Shooting for the Alpha Legion, we went ahead and unloaded everything that we could into Fulgrim and his unit. We started with Exodus, who managed to snipe out the already wounded Tartarus Terminator. Then my recon squad added their shots. One guy snapped shooting the other three normal. We managed to actually wound again. The carries from the Contemptor got a rend, and it also got some regular uh, hits and wounds in, and it scored one. The bolters from the tax squad didn't actually do anything. The siege tyrants, however, managed to actually kill another Tartarus because it failed its regular two-up save and got instant death. And we even put a couple wounds on Fulgrim. Then the javelins, who Fulgrim and his squad were saving the shroud for, actually managed to kill two more. So that was an incredibly effective shooting phase, much more than I thought it would be. Um, Paul wisely kept his standard bear alive and Fulgrim and the champion. So they'll still be scoring that objective at the beginning of their turn, but that was much more effective than I actually thought it was going to be. And we'll come back down to the exercise and futility over here. Can Alpharius and his squad finish off an assault squad after four, almost four turns, six or seven rounds of combat? I have no idea how much it was at this point, but we'll see if we can actually kill this last guy. Yeah, we're going to film this anyhow. If Alpharius can't kill this last assault marine, then something's really wrong. So hitting on threes. And of course, this is the <laughs> round that everything actually hits. And yeah, you actually do have uh, five, six up in Oh, that's easy. I'll yeah, pass all of those. Nothing Yahtzee. Yep, there okay. we go. Oh, he's dead. Hey, it only took, what, six or seven rounds of combat, and we finally finished off that squad. So quick last turn here, Fulgrim and his uh, few friends that are still alive are just hiding behind that rhino. So attempting not to get killed in turn five to secure a few more points for not uh, losing the wallet. They did score that objective, uh, so I did get an extra point for that. But Jason is going to be scoring three objectives in the next turn. So the last turn for the Alpha Legion was short and sweet. Uh, the Inducti did their thing. They stayed on that objective because I'll score at the end of the turn because of the way the rules work for the player that goes second scoring at the end. Alpharius or not Alpharius or Alpharius Inferior is here by this objective. And again, we will score that at the end of the turn. And then coming over to this left-hand side, the only other thing that actually needed to move was the Siege Tyrants. We'll score that other objective with the Tac Marines in just a moment. I couldn't actually run and get them and also run and get the recons within range. So we'll just score the one objective. And then we've moved the Siege Tyrants around because what we're going to try and do is we're going to play a game of can we actually kill Fulgrim? Um, just because we think that this was something that you would want to see. We didn't want to call it after turn four. So we'll see what happens. We're going to film everything on the screen. And uh, yeah, so let's get started. So we'll start with the Javelins to try and blow up the Rhino. 
because the siege tyrants actually cannot. So we need the javelin multi melters to do it. So here's the two shots, and they both hit. And the first one, that is a pen, just barely. And the second one, that is a pen as well. So yeah, I would, would have obviously been shrouding this. No problem. no problem. No point not to. Yep, do your shroud. So two five ups. One goes through. Okay, so here's the one. Does it blow it up? There Boom, you go. it does. There it blows go. up. Uh, and let's do the explosion range. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's going to be my three guys there. Going to be your three guys. So the mm -hmm. rhino goes out of the way. Mm -hmm. And then your three guys get, uh, let's see if we wound you. Mm -hmm. so those are strength eights. Uh, yeah, two wounds go through. So two two ups, and we're good. All right. And then now the siege tyrants, do they have what it takes? We'll see what happens. Uh, we've got five combi bolters. I do get another free shroud against this. You do, because it's Fulgrim, he gets a free reaction, so you'll shroud that as well. And combi bolters twin linked. So we do hit with four of them. And we do two wounds so far. That's two ups, and we're good. Okay, and then where it counts, the crack mm -hmm. missiles. So 10 crack missile shots. Can we kill a Primark? Not with rolls like that. So we'll see. And then these are wounding on twos. Only four wounds. And actually you can, uh, yeah. yeah, we're good. You're good. So we cannot kill the Primark, but we wanted to film that for you. And believe it or not, that actually makes a huge difference as well because that squad is worth a lot of points between the command squad, the chaplain and whatnot. So I score three more at the end of the turn, bringing mm -hmm. us actually to a tie, but we're gonna count up the secondaries in just a moment and we will come back with the results. Wow, that was uh, that was pretty interesting, the way that, that all a, ended up. Indeed, quite intense game. Yeah, thank you for the game as well. Likewise, pleasure as always. Yeah, first time with the Prime Marks. Uh, I'm sure all of you are dying to know exactly what happened with that. So at the end of the game, we were both sitting on 4-4 four, four for the number of objectives that we actually scored. That's right. Nobody lost the Warlord, nobody lost a Prime Mark. Even though I tried really, really hard, nobody lost a Prime Mark. And it came down to the secondary scoring in the Goonhammer mission called the Cost of War. And basically, both of us finished in the 50 to 75 range of stuff that was still alive. That's right. Therefore, we actually ended up having a draw. That's crazy. Very unexpected, for sure. Yeah. I was, I was stunned that it actually went that way because I was getting my butt actually handed to me the first two turns and Alpharius was being very un-Alpharius-like. <laughs> and uh, yeah, lots of different things. But hey, that's the sign of a good game. It just kind of swung back and forth and I really enjoyed that. Likewise, it was a great game, indeed. What do you think about Primark versus Primark? Um, I mean, I, I guess each Primark has probably quite a unique skill set. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, Alpharius's ability to improve the rest of the army definitely was quite insane. To have preferred yeah. enemy everything on the entire army, the Sudden Strike as well, I think those are very powerful abilities. Mm -hmm. Himself in combat, probably not the, not the, not the most impressive character, let's yeah. put it this way. Fulgrim, I mean, to be honest, didn't get to see much. Um, very hard to evaluate whether, I mean, I'm, I want to say probably in combat he's good, um, but we didn't see any of that sadly, so I guess we'll have to find out another day. Yes, and uh, I was playing the mission and I was actually running away from Fulgrim, otherwise he would have just actually munched my entire left flank, so I had no choice but to do that. And Alpharius can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Fulgrim, so we certainly weren't going to run each of them just straight into each other's face. Um, but no, I enjoyed that as well, and I thought it was a really, really great game to, to play at that points level, to play with the Primarchs, and to mm -hmm. have it end up in a draw is even better. Of course, likewise. So, who was your man of the match there? I mean, I don't think there aren't many choices for me, so definitely the Assault Squad with Chaplin and the Apothecary. I mean, they did a lot of work. If you think about it, first they came in, they pinned your last cannons. That was very critical. Yep. Um, and then subsequently they killed both the last cannons. They killed the attack squad and then they held up Alpharius squad for like four or five rounds of combat. Yes. So no, no two ways about it. Totally agree. I think that was a textbook best case scenario of a single squad <laughs> deep striking in and just wreaking havoc. So mm -hmm. yeah, I got to give it to you. They really, really, really did the job. I think they all got to get promoted to Palantine Blades oh, for yeah. the next game. Yep, yep, yep. Worthwhile. <laughs> for me, I think I'm going to have to go with the Javelins. The Javelins in that game managed to destroy the Spartan. Mm -hmm. They managed to kill your Praetor with the banner on my right flank. That's right. That we're trying to get towards that objective on the destroyed Land Raider. That's right. They went and just made a nuisance out of themselves. So I think actually the Javelins did really, really good this game. And they're not, they're not normally... 
a unit that I would say that with under night fighting because it does limit their utility sometimes, especially in this army with no searchlights. Very true. Very true. Yep. Yep. So yeah, really enjoyed that one. Um, we hope to bring you more content soon. We hope you liked this one as our first Primark battle at 4K. So if you have any comments, please leave them down. I know we made a couple mistakes, like me forgetting that uh, Alpharius could have been allocating his different attacks when he was out of the challenge and whatnot. But uh, yeah, any last comments? Any last thoughts? No, well, pleasure as always. And yeah, looking forward to play with Primax again. I want to say probably the second time will be a bit more smooth with how to best utilize them. And maybe we'll see some Primax on Primax action as well. I think so. We do have some exciting combinations that we can do. Uh, we have Mortarian. We have, I'm working on a Ferris Manus. Mm. We have a Jagatai Khan. We have also a uh, Horus. So we've got a lot of different Primarchs that we're very excited to bring to you. So... Once again, thank you very much. For those of you that have followed all the way through, give us that like, subscribe, comment, do all that jazz. We really enjoy it. And we will catch you on the next one.